Hello. In this lecture, we will talk about the relation of eFlows and ecosystem services. We will review the most common frameworks used to represent the different types of services that ecosystems provide for society. We will present how changes in water resources and environmental flows affect the availability of water-related ecosystem services, and we will discuss the positive and negative aspects of monetary valuation of ecosystem services and environmental flows in water resource management. The concept of ecosystem services has been used for decades by ecologists to describe how the function and structure of ecosystems determines the tangible and intangible services and goods that ecosystems provide for society. The ecosystem structure and processes results from the interaction among biotic and abiotic components of the ecosystem. This determines ecosystem functions, which refer to the capacity of ecosystems processes to generate goods and services for humans. When these services are used is when we refer to ecosystem services. The tangible services are often considered goods, while the intangible are considered services. The idea of ecosystem services is useful to show how humankind survival depends on maintaining the functioning and structure of ecosystems and biodiversity. The degradation of natural systems, for example, reducing their extension, extinguishing species of polluting water, soil, and air, reduces the capacity of the ecosystems to keep functioning and maintain the processes that make life possible, including human life. For example, filtration of water through the layers of the soil and the assimilation of compounds dissolved in water by plants results in water of a specific quality and quantity that flows through rivers and can be stored in lakes. A river supplies water that can be used directly for human consumption as a good, but also can have a non-consumptive use as a service just by being in the environment. As it could be the case of a waterfall whose sound and view can help people feel relaxed. An environmental component or feature can provide various types of services. The same waterfall also provides other services like uh, cooling and humidifying the air when it is uh, flowing, influencing air temperature. The components of the environment and the services are independent. A component of the environment, such as land, water, or vegetation, can produce ecosystem services, but it depends on other components and the services that they provide. The vegetation cover is an active component in the water cycle, influencing runoff and river flows. Water and sediment regimes are characterized by different properties, such as the quality, quantity, frequency, duration, velocity, and timing of the flow. The combination of these characteristics vary among river systems and determine the conditions that will define the habitat for other living components of the environment. For example, the soil determines the biotic communities that can be established in a certain area. And these communities are composed of aquatic or semi-aquatic, terrestrial, or vegetation fauna. River flows are related to different ecological processes and influence the environment beyond the river bank, from the headwaters to the water bodies in which they drain. This is the case of lakes or deltas in coastal areas. The interaction among physical and biological components in an ecosystem results in the services that people will enjoy.
The dependency of humans on the environment has brought to the attention of decision makers that the quality of the environment is important for the well-being of people. Well-being is defined as the state of being comfortable, but it involves much more. Well-being covers all the aspects that contribute to the realization of individual and collective goals for physical, economic, mental, and spiritual fulfillment. Water is essential for life and for terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem services to function. In that way, they can provide the services that will sustain society and economic development. There are different frameworks that have been used to analyze ecosystem services. Here we will describe only four of them. The U.S. National Ecosystem Services Classification System, the illustration on the right, considers four groups. It distinguishes a supply side with a group for ecosystem components such as air, water, and a group for the end products of nature or final ecosystem services. Then it considers a demand side, the part that humans influence. And there are two groups. One for how the services are used directly or indirectly, uh, direct use or not use, and then a group for the users of those services. In Europe, the Common International Standard for Ecosystem Services considers three main types, provisioning services, regulating and maintenance, and cultural. The Millennium Ecosystem Assessment Framework popularized the concept of ecosystem services and their relation with human well-being. The classification includes tangible and intangible services and classifies all of them in four groups. Supporting services are those that correspond to processes determining ecosystem resilience and function. Regulating services are those functions that regulate the environment. Provisioning services are the products that support human needs. Cultural services refer to the benefits that contribute to spiritual and intellectual enrichment. All these services are related to different aspects of human well-being, such as security, material needs, health, social relations, or freedom of choice and action. There are different pressures affecting aquatic ecosystems, and the services that they provide are declining. The European Commission reports that hydromorphological change, pollution, and overabstraction are the main factors affecting water bodies in Europe. Grisetti and other authors consider that aquatic ecosystems are affected by changes in water quality and quantity, both for surface and groundwater, and also that river systems are affected by changes in the hydromorphology of their water bodies or water courses. Changes in habitat and biotic communities affect the aquatic ecosystems, and this also affects other parts of the system, even in other parts of the basin, not directly in contact with the aquatic ecosystems. There are different pressures that we can see here in the diagram. We can classify them as those that are modifying water quantity, such as abstraction of water, but also changes in precipitation because of climate change, and changes in temperature and runoff. There are others that are modifying water quality, such as the overload of nutrients caused by pollution, also chemical pollution, pathogens, organic matter, 
or saline intrusion. Other pressures are contributing to transform the habitat, and this might be those related to physical alteration, both in the river systems, but also in the catchments. And there are others that refer directly to the transformation of the biotic communities, such as changes in land cover, invasive species, and the decline in native species. The framework proposed by the European Union uses the driver, pressure, state, impact, and response model to show the interaction between the socioeconomic and ecological subsystems. Ecosystems represent the supply side and the socioeconomic system the demand side. So on the demand side, we can see that human well-being results from the use of ecosystem services and the benefits influence the value given to them. Ecosystem services contribute to different aspects of human well-being. And some of these services are valued monetarily, others in non-monetary terms. The interest to increase the monetary or non-monetary benefits is the driver behind human activities that become the pressures that are changing the state of the ecosystems, resulting in negative impacts on specific components or the environment in general. These impacts are changes in the supply of ecosystem services. And if the services become scarce, their value could increase. To control the negative impacts, society needs to respond to changes in policies or laws to manage the supply and demand, especially the demand. This can be through changes in governance structures and social processes to engage stakeholders in discussions to set specific goals for environmental protection and human development. Agreeing in management objectives for water and other resources is not enough if there are no changes in attitudes and values given to ecosystems and their services. Although different authors talk about services from rivers and water systems, there is not a comprehensive list of all the services related to environmental flows. The report of the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment includes a generic list of services in each one of the four types it considers. However, it's not very specific. In 2020, the European Union released a report for the project Mapping and Assessment of Ecosystems and their Services, an EU Ecosystem Assessment. This report has information on approximately 100 indicators and analyzes in detail six ecosystem services, flood control, nature-based recreation, crop pollination, crop provision, carbon sequestration, and timber provision. Here on this slide, you can see some of the indicators that relate to the conditions of rivers and water-related ecosystems. You can check the report to see the list of all the indicators that relate to the condition of aquatic ecosystems. The Niger Delta in Mali illustrates how human livelihoods are linked to the natural flow regime. In this area, the annual floods cover approximately 30,000 square kilometers. The Delta is an enormous wetland that provides habitat for numerous birds and fish species and benefits over half a million people. Different communities use this ecosystem in various ways. For example, fishing communities profit from the fish habitat. When floods recede, farmers grow crops in the areas that have been inundated and pastoralists herd their cattle on the grasslands. In 
in Bangladesh, the center band mangrove area depends on freshwater inflows from the Gorai River and offtake of the Ganges River. These are important to maintain low salinity levels. This area is home to the Royal Bengal Tiger and many other species. Local communities depend on this area for wood, harvesting of products such as honey, and also fishing. Valuation of ecosystem services aims to determine how the trade-offs and distribution of impacts on different groups and areas are addressed in decision-making. This is related to intra- and intergeneration equity. Valuation is an important but controversial aspect of ecosystem services assessment because valuation tries to find the monetary worth of services. The value of a service often is relative and depends on the personal and cultural, non-monetary and monetary values that people give to different ecosystem components or services that they provide. Valuation is useful in several cases. For example, to account for natural capital in national capital accounts as a way to evaluate the effectiveness of environmental policy and law. And to set a reference value to negotiate compensation for the loss of ecosystem services. Some of the methods that are commonly used refer to cost-benefit analysis, market price of products or services, or productivity. There are specific guides to apply valuation methods for ecosystem services. These are some of the common methods. Market price method estimates economic values for ecosystem products or services that are brought and sold in commercial markets. Productivity methods estimate the economic value of ecosystem products or services that contribute to the production of other commercially marketed goods. The hedonic pricing method estimates economic values for ecosystems or environmental services that directly affect market prices or some other goods. It is most commonly applied to variations in housing prices that reflect the value of local environmental attributes. The travel cost method estimates economic values associated with ecosystems or sites that are used for recreation. It assumes that the value of a site is reflected in how much people are willing to pay to travel to visit that site. Damage costs avoided and replacement costs and substitute costs methods estimate economic values based on costs or of avoided damages resulting from loss of ecosystem services the cost of replacing ecosystem services, or the cost of providing substitute services. The contingent valuation method estimates economic values for virtually any ecosystem or environmental services. It's one of the most commonly used methods for estimating non-use or passive use values. It consists of asking people to directly state their willingness to pay for specific environmental services based on hypothetical scenarios. One of the sites that provide information on these valuation methods is ecosystemvaluation.org. Although valuation of ecosystem services is getting common, it has different disadvantages. Valuation methods focus mostly on provisioning services and are unable to capture the tangible and intangible values of many ecosystem services. Many people consider it even unethical or inappropriate to try to give a monetary value to services that are not valuable. For example, those that relate to the culture and spirituality of different groups. 
an indigenous man from the Caribbean gave me an example. For some people, a fish from the river can be replaced with canned fish from the supermarket. For an indigenous person, that, that fish might fill the stomach, but will never fill the spiritual void of losing the river and the ability to teach children how to fish or how to pass them the stories that make the river an intrinsic part of the individual and the community. So losing ecosystem services affects the physical, spiritual, and mental well-being of individuals and communities, not to mention all the different ecological implications. It is important to highlight that the loss of cultural and spiritual values and services cannot be mitigated. To date, valuation has not stopped the degradation of ecosystem services and the decline of biodiversity. But there is an interest to bring this idea of ecosystem services to political decisions. And there are several reasons why there has not been too much attention before. People often are not aware of how their well-being depends on the services that ecosystems provide even when those ecosystems are far from where they live. For example, many people might see the Amazons as something very remote and not be aware of all the roles that this large forest area has on climate. There are often misconceptions about ecosystems and their services. The idea that there is an unlimited supply, which is not true, or that technology can replace them, which is also not true. Economic systems are not able to account for the decline, and that is why the idea of other services that are important is relevant in this case. These are, for example, and the regula regulating services or the cultural services. When humans affect the environment, also there might be a long time before it is evident how this is affecting people. However, in most cases, economic decisions prevail and ecosystems and their services are affected by economic interest. And this is uh, often because there are low or no incentives to protect them. So it is important to raise awareness of how well-being depends on the well-being of the environment. We are concluding this presentation. And there are a few points that I could like to highlight. The analysis of ecosystem services is a tool to identify how different interventions can affect water levels in our case, aquatic ecosystems, and in general, all the services that people enjoy from the ecosystems. The assessment of ecosystem services is important to raise awareness about political and decision makers, and also stakeholders about the importance to protect the environment and maintain human well-being. Valuation is one aspect of ecosystem assessment, but the main purpose should be to help parties understand the trade-offs that will result from modifying terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems. And this will support better decisions to prevent the negative consequences of changes in the environment and in people.